اذهب الى فرعون انه طغى الله سبحانه وتعالى saying that the pinnacle the essence of the message and the essence of the sin that Fir'aun did was Tughyan, which is injustice. Number one was his claiming that he was the Lord Most High. He said, I don't know of any Lord for you except myself. Number two is that he detained Bani Israel. Thirdly was <clears throat> he had a dream that a fire had come from like Philistine, that area had come into Egypt and and the fire had killed away all the the Qibt, the, the people of, of Fir'aun, their, uh, their race. And so when they asked about an interpretation, they said that there is a, a child that's going to come from Bani Israel that's going to ruin your kingdomship and take away your empire. And so Fir'aun commanded that all the children who were born to uh, Bani Israel that they be killed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and th in this, it was a, a bala, a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an enormous test from Allah azza wa jal, that He tested Bani Israel with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, to Ummi Musa, if you're afraid for your son, then throw him into the river. A parent normally doesn't even let their eyesight off of their child. A parent has that much, you know, protection of the child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling her that if she fears for a child, take the child, put him in a basket and throw him in the river and let the water take him. What did Ummi Musa do? She did that. Musa alayhi salam arrives at the doorstep the river step, because they have a lake castle. Uh, Musa alayhi salam arrives at the home of Fir'aun. Who's the first person to see Musa alayhi salam? The wife of Fir'aun. She picks up Musa, she kisses Musa, and she says, he is the delight of my eyes and your eyes. Asiya alayhi salam didn't have children, and, and this concerned her very much. She was very saddened by this. Her love came out and she wanted to protect Musa. And you'll see that she says, Because they know this child is a Bani Israel child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him so much that he wouldn't take the milk of any woman. Until uh, uh, Musa's uh, sister, she's following along, she's seeing what happened. And then she said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that she said, she said, shall I not tell you of a home that will do kafala for him? Kafala and you know nursing. The mother of Musa alayhi salam came and immediately Musa alayhi salam milked from his mother. He's very happy. Fir'aun seeing this, he's like, why is this so? And so she said in response to Fir'aun, she said that my milk is very sweet and my smell is very beautiful. All the children love me. And Fir'aun was happy with her response. And so he let her. She's living now in the castle and being treated with so much respect and so that she would know that the promise of Allah is the truth. But most people don't, don't understand and don't know this. Musa salam, as he was growing up and he saw the injustices that were happening to his people. Again, Musa is from Bani Israel and so he's not from the Qibt, even though he's growing up in the home of Fir'aun. When Musa alayhi salam, he was once going out in, in, the, in the city and he saw one of the Bani Israel people in a fight with one of the, um, the Egyptians. So Musa alayhi salam was known to you know, support justice and you know, stand up for this. And so they called Musa alayhi salam, the, that Bani Israel person, he called Musa alayhi salam, come and help me, help me. And so Musa alayhi salam is breaking up in the fight and got very angry. He hit the Egyptian person. He hit him so hard that he killed him. Now, that's giving you a little glimpse of Musa alayhi salam's strength. Immediately Musa alayhi salam felt regret for this and did tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next day Musa alayhi salam saw the same person from Bani Israel fighting with another person from the Egyptians. 
And Musa alayhi salam said to, in, uh, said to him, he said, you are like a, a very clear troublemaker. And then this person said to Musa, قَالَ أَتُرِيدُ أَن تَقْتُلَنِي كَمَا قَتَلْتَ نَفْسًا بِالْأَمْسِ And so you can see even this person, he's, uh, he instigates fights. Then the news went out and then someone came to Musa alayhi salam and told them, إِنَّ الْمَلَأَ يَأْتَمِرُونَ بِكَ لِيَقْتُلُكَ فَخْرُجْ So they said, leave. Musa alayhi salam, he left. He left Egypt. He's walking and he's looking in fear. He's walking and then he's looking. Are they following me? Are they following me? So with no food, with no, um, with no preparation, with no riding animal, Musa alayhi salam just left like that. How long do you survive in such a situation? And so Musa alayhi salam, he went to a place near Medya. And he's like collapsed. And then he saw some people gathering at a water hole. He saw some people with their sheep and their livestock getting the water. And then he saw these two girls, these two women, and they were standing to the side. And they weren't watering their, their sheep. And so even though Musa salam was in this situation and so tired and the situ he went to them and he asked them, why aren't you, you know, taking your sheep to... Because he, this um, business of uh, tending to the sheep and taking them to the water and all is very difficult work. So you see, there's only men in that area. And he sees two women there and they're not even allowing their, um, their sheep to, to go forward. And then the women said that they can't, you know, push and shove with the men. They wait till the men finish and then they try to bet their best to um, get the water for the sheep. And so Musa alayhi salam said that I will get the water for you. He saw these women in, in distress, in need. And even though he was in need, he was still taking care of them. And Musa alayhi salam went down and, and you know, sat down. Uh, and then he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, my Lord, that indeed I am very much in need of your khair to come down upon me. At that time, Musa alayhi salam made that dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine all the situation. And then he lands his dream job. These girls, they came, the father saw them. He said, how come you came back so early? And they said, this man, he helped us. He's a very strong man and so on. So he sent his daughters to go and bring them, bring this man. And so they brought Musa salam and they fed him. And then the daughter said, she said, Oh my father, hire him. That the best person to do ijara, to hire is, is the strong one, the Amin, the trustworthy one. The father of this, of, of one of the daughters from Median, he said to her, how do you know he's Amin? When she went back, they went back to call Musa salam to come to their home. What did Musa salam do to her? He told her to walk behind him. Now she's the one leading the way. Why did he do that? Alayhi salam. So that he wouldn't walk behind a woman and, and her body would be showing. And so he said, I'll walk with you, but you walk behind me. From this, she concluded that this was a person of integrity. And so she said to her father, hire him. And so her father hired him. And so he landed the dream job. It's like eight years or 10 years that he would work with him and that he would marry one of his daughters. So normally people in their list is they want to get the job and then they want to get married. In one night, Musa alayhi made this dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in that night, he was offered the dream job, a place of relaxation, a place of calm, a place where he would, you know, every night he's sleeping under the stars preparing for this mission that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send him on. And he got married to such a righteous woman. After about eight or 10 years, Musa alayhi salam had that desire built up in him. Allah subhanahu wa placed in his heart the desire to return back to Egypt. When they're traveling through the desert, Musa alayhi salam, it's, it's very dark. They went to Turi Sayna. At that place, Musa alayhi salam saw a fire. And so he told his wife, he told her, stay here. I'm going to that fire. Either I will get directions from that area or I will, you know, get one of the embers, like take one of the flames and come back and, you know, we can benefit from that. And then when Musa alayhi salam entered that area, subhanAllah, even as preparing this, Allah Azza wa Jal spoke to Musa, Inni ana rabbuk. Take your sandals off. 
إِنَّكَ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ طُوَى That you are in the holy land of Tuwa, the pure land. وَأَنَ اخْتَرْتُكَ And I chose you. فَاسْتَمِعْ لِمَا يُحَى So listen carefully to what is going to be revealed to you. إِنِّي أَنَ اللَّهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدْنِي وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لَذِكْرِي Indeed, I am Allah. There is no God except me. So worship me and establish the Salah for my remembrance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا مُوسَى what you, What's in your hand, O Musa? It, it was in the discussion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to throw it down. He threw it down, it became a snake, and then he became afraid. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him not to be afraid. Musa alayhi salam was commanded to return back to Fir'aun. Musa alayhi salam, when he went to Fir'aun and he said, I'm the messenger of Allah, I want to take Bani Israel and we're going to leave Egypt from here. We're going to move out. So now, Fir'aun starts using t- the techniques again. He says to him, didn't we raise you as a young child? And so he's trying to humiliate him. He's also saying to, uh, to Musa, right at the very beginning, he said, وَقَتَلْتَ uh, نَفْسًا it's just like, how can you come and tell me what religion is, what iman is, when you yourself murdered someone and that's disbelief? He says to him, Qala fa'altuha. He said, I did it. Wa ana min al-dalin. And I was of those who was ignorant at that time. Fafarartu minkum lamma khiftukum. So I ran away from you when I feared you. Fawahabali rabbi hukma. So Allah gave me as a gift religious knowledge and you know right judgment of affairs in this prophethood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him a prophet فَوَهَبَ لِي رَبِّي حُكْمًا وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ and made me one of those as the appointed messengers of his وَتِلْكَ نِعْمَةٌ تَمُنُّهَا عَلَيْهِ and he said and this is a past favor تَمُنُّهَا عَلَيْهِ like when you give someone a gift and then you tell the person didn't I give you this, didn't I give you that it's, it's not generosity and now he's reminding him of these favors to say to him, وَتِلْكَ نِعْمَةٌ تَمُنُّ is because of this past favor, is that why you enslaved Bani Israel? Showing that it has nothing to do with the issue. So he answered his issue and then brought him to what they're really discussing here. And then Firan, then the dialogue goes into who is the Lord of the worlds. And then Musa alayhi salam explains who is, who is the Lord of the worlds. After Musa alayhi salam said that, one of the things that Fir'aun also said to him, again, misconceptions, he said, what about the nations that came before? Because Musa alayhi salam, they used to worship idols, they used to worship, you know, human gods and so on and so forth. So if you said they're in hellfire, everybody's going to say that, oh, you know what, this religion is, uh, we're not going to follow Musa because he's insulting our fathers, insulting our heritage. And now Musa can't say, he can't lie and say that, oh, you know what, they were on guidance. So Musa alayhi salam said, he said, knowledge of the past generations is with my Lord. لا يضلوا, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not misguided, ولا ينسى, and he doesn't forget. And so he took them back to Tawheed, explaining who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And then Fir'aun, he came to the conclusion, you know, he's saying to everybody, Musa is, is a magician. This is the ultimate misconception, he chose it, and he said, he said, you're a magician, or we're going to bring magicians just like you. So it's like, it's not even open to discussion. And so again, something called presuppositions. As soon as Musa a.s. threw down his staff, it became a huge snake. And then he t- pulled his hand out and it was completely white. Fir'aun immediately said, he said, you're one of the magicians. Immediately. And then Fir'aun said, not only did he say that, but he said that you've come to change the people's religion and take them out of their land. Each point, Musa a.s., if you see what Musa a.s. is saying, all his statements are full of wisdom, full of hikmah, full of guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fir'aun's statements are like swear words. Oh, he's a magician. Oh, he's crazy. Oh, he's this. He's not saying anything uh, intelligent. And so... Fir'aun, it was actually against the law that anyone would worship other than Fir'aun. If you went and got a different idol, you'd be in big trouble. The magicians at the time of Fir'aun were very high status people. Right? If this was a magician, you're talking about they are in aristocrat society level. Right? They're at the highest level. 
And when they came to Fir'aun, Fir'aun, um, they said to Fir'aun, if we win, are, are we going to get some sort of reward? And Fir'aun said, Qala na'am. He said, you will have this if you win. And number two is that I will bring you even closer to me. So they will get even higher status in the kingdom of Fir'aun. Musa alayhi salam is now up in competition against these uh, magicians. Musa alayhi salam spoke to them before the event and they decided to go forward with it. It's Musa versus all the magicians. They throw down their staffs and they can't make their staffs into real snakes, if you didn't know this. All they can do is illusions, but it's very scary. Musa salam was scared at that, at that incident, he had fear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we said to him, don't be afraid. Musa salam commanded to throw his staff. As you know, he threw down his staff, it became a huge snake. And in front of all the people, all the Egyptians that are watching, all of Bani Israel, all the mala in front of Fir'aun, the snake, ate all the other snakes. All the magicians prostrated. They all prostrated to Allah Azza wa Jal. They said, we believe in the Lord of Al-Alameen, Rabbi Musa wa Harun. So that it's clear because Fir'aun was telling the people, Ana Rabbukum Al-A'la. And then they said, Rabbi Musa wa Harun, we believe in the Lord of Musa and Harun. He said, have you believed in him before I gave you permission? And so they became the best of people in one day. In this situation, what did the people of Fir'aun do? Did they believe? They just saw the miracle right there, but yet they kept quiet. They're waiting for Fir'aun to give them permission to believe in, in the Lord. He didn't give permission, immediately Fir'aun started accusing them. He said, this was a plot. And he said, and not only is it a plot, he said that all the magicians have teamed up with Musa. He said that Musa is your chief, he's your big man who taught you guys the magic. And you guys did this and you set this up and this all was a big show to misguide all the people. And recite what the magician said to Fir'aun. There's different statements of response that they said to Fir'aun. One of the key things they said, they said to Fir'aun that we don't care about what you're going to do. They said, make your judgment because you're not a judge. You are only a judge of this life. Now, Panatala gives the example, لِلَّذِينَ amanu. Is it for the believing women? No, it's for the believing men and women, all the believers, till the end of time. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا Their example is the wife of Fir'aun. Because it doesn't matter who you're married to. You can be married to the most noblest person and you can be in hellfire. And now we're speaking about Fir'aun, who was one of the biggest tyrants who ever walked this earth. And his wife, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, made her an example for all believers till the Day of Judgment. When Fir'aun heard that she had believed in Musa, what does he do? Is he going to argue with his wife? To the point of death, where she's praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's nobody to help her. There's nobody except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so who did she turn to? She turned to Allah Azza wa Asiya wanted to build a house, but not in this world. Who is going to build a house for her? Saying, oh Allah, you build the house for me. Where, where do you want the house to be built? On this side of town or that side of town? What, what area of the city do you want to live in? I want to live in Jannah. Okay, you want a house built in Jannah. Where in Jannah? Oh my Lord, build a home for me near to you in Jannah. And save me and protect me from Fir'aun and his actions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took her back to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the Egyptians did not believe in Musa even though they saw the sign. But they were cowards. Haman is the prime minister of Fir'aun. Fir'aun is saying like, okay, let's take this scientifically, let's take this logically. Haman, build for me a huge tower so that I will climb the tower and I will look in the heavens. And I'll see if this God that Musa salam is claiming is true or not. Haman, you will see that Allah frequently mentions Fir'aun and Haman. 
and Fir'aun will say something and you know, he's telling, you know, let Musa and, and his people go. And Haman will say, he said, are you going to just let Musa go and, um, and his people and he's going to spread corruption in the land and he's going to humiliate you and your, and, you know, uh, and your idols. And, and Fir'aun's like, you know, that's what I was thinking. They can't let them go. The nine signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Musa with. Nine signs. Al-Asa is the staff of Musa alayhi salam. Al-Yad, his hand. It wasn't black magic. It was a nur that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in his hand so everybody would see. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As-Sineen, uh, they had like a drought that, that came to them. Naqsu min al-Thamarat, their uh, economic situation went down. Their economy went down. Their Thamarat, their fruits, they were not bearing fruit the way it was uh, before. Al-Tufan was the flooding. Al-Jarad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent locusts amongst them. Even when a person has a crop, how can they protect the crops from the locusts? Al-Qummala, which was the lice. Al-Dafada, the frogs. They were infested with frogs. Wadama, and the blood. Their water was turned to blood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent these ayat. If Fir'aun is not going to allow Bani Israel to leave, then this is what's coming to them. Until finally Fir'aun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he told Musa alayhi salam, ask your Lord to make this go away. And subhanAllah, even they asked Musa, make dua to your Lord that this will go away. I thought you didn't believe in his Lord. And now they're telling Musa that, you know, we've been cursed by you and your people, ask your Lord. And then if you do this and it goes away, then we'll let you go. And then reluctantly they let them go. And then when they let them go, then they sent their henchmen out there like, we can't let them spread mischief to our neighbors. Fir'aun said to his Congress, you know, all these gathering of the Mela is all there. And he's saying to them, he said, doesn't the dominion of Egypt belong to me? And aren't these rivers flowing from underneath me? Can't you see? I've got the money, so I'm on the truth. Am I better? Or is this, you know, this uh, low person, Maheen, you know, like has no money. Fir'aun, and, and as the scholars mentioned, he arrogantly claimed that the rivers flow from underneath him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the sea flow from on top of him. Uh, Musa alayhi salam made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, O oh my Lord, inna ka verily you gave Fir'aun and his uh, mala and his aristocrats, his chiefs, zina, all this b glamour, and amwalan fil hayat dunya and wealth in this hayat dunya. Rabbana, O oh my Lord, and with that money they are misguiding from your path. O oh Allah, to extinguish that wealth that they had, because they're never going to believe until they see the grievous punishment. When the sea parted for Musa alayhi salam, from Fir'aun's arrogance, when the sea parted, you're wondering why did Fir'aun continue into the sea? The sea parted and Bani Israel was able to escape. Fir'aun in his arrogance, he said, look, I opened the sea. And so he told his people to follow them into the sea. They continued into the sea and after Bani Israel and, and Musa alayhi salam, after they had left from the sea, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the sea to close down upon them. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and from the people and the nations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed, minhum from them, Allah drowned them.